Hi, my name is Carmen, and I am an early childhood special education teacher, a life and ADHD coach, and I'm the host of this podcast, Authentically ADHD. I created this podcast to help anyone wondering if they have ADHD, people who have been diagnosed for a while and want some more support and community. I'm here to bring you the latest research on ADHD and neurodiversities while we talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of ADHD. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi there, and welcome or welcome back to the podcast. How is it going? When this episode comes out, I will be going into the third or fourth week of school. And, you know, to be honest, that kind of scares me a bit. Um, Seriously, as I get older, I feel like time goes by faster. Am I am I alone here? I hope not. Um, Yeah. Anyways, I am so happy that you pressed play today because a lot of people tend to think that they aren't perfectionists because they've never quote unquote done anything perfectly when in actuality having that thought is a sign of perfectionism. So you're in the right place. I thought those same things. So today we are going to take a deep dive into what perfectionism is how it can harm us and or hold us back in life, and some tips to recognize and manage perfectionism and maybe even recover from it or get over it completely to improve your quality of life and stop letting it hold you back. Are you ready? Let's get started. So what exactly is perfectionism? There are a few definitions of it, but my definition of it is a bit complex because I feel that perfectionism has to do with a lot of different factors. So perfectionism to me is this relentless pursuit for flawlessness driven by an internalized need for validation and the fear of failure. I'm going to repeat that one more time. Perfectionism to me is this relentless pursuit for flawlessness driven by an internalized need for validation and the fear of failure. This makes sense that ADHD and perfectionism are closely related because when you grow up in a world that holds standards that you cannot meet and you're rejected by peers and given so much negative feedback, it feeds that need to be quote unquote perfect, liked, and validated. This all comes from some kind of like self, like warped sense of self, depending how your ADHD kind of presents and how you deal with perfectionism. You may actually not be a perfectionist. You may not struggle with perfectionism and have ADHD, but Sometimes we do have it, and as ADHDers, we have underdeveloped prefrontal cortexes, so our executive functions that help us be, you know, functional adults are deficited. In turn, we create this intense internal pressure to be perfect. So ADHD and perfectionism can both, like, exacerbate the other with feelings of, like, inadequacy, low self-esteem, and the need to people please because we want to be little quiet people who make everybody else happy. But this is not reality. And the impact of perfectionism or even someone with just some perfectionistic tendencies is big. And it's not good. It affects us in so many different ways on differing levels. Again, it's a spectrum. So first, you know, there are three types of uh, perfectionism, back end, front end, and in the process. Front end perfectionism refers to getting ready to get ready that like that process of needing the quote unquote perfect conditions and setup to start the thing, whatever it is. 
And back-end perfectionism is the over-editing when the product is technically actually done, but we have a fear of releasing it into the world. So it keeps us editing, fixing, spinning, and ruminating. Perfectionism in the process is dragging out each step with fictional problems, um, trying to, you know, reach these unrealistic expectations that we have set for ourselves and then beating ourselves up for not meeting those expectations. So an example would be, I need to start a podcast episode and I'm cleaning my environment, printing so much research that I won't even use half of it and going to the library to write and, oh no, it's too crowded. So now I have to leave. In the process, perfectionism here would look like writing and then rewriting, crossing off, changing ideas, and starting over, over and over again. And then back-end perfectionism would look like me over-editing a perfectly good episode because it doesn't meet my unrealistically high expectations. Then I beat myself up for taking too long, not meeting those unrealistically high standards, and or being a failure at podcasting. Now, I know this may seem a bit dramatic, but that's because I dramatized it. We often don't notice perfectionism until someone points it out or makes it dramatized like that, or we recognize it through our own personal growth. There are a few other ways to know if you struggle with perfectionism. Like, do you find yourself comparing yourself to others quite a bit? Does starting a project feel like you first need to climb this huge, gigantic wall? Do you often find yourself in chronic burnout? And what about your worth? Do you base your worth off of your productivity? If you answered yes to any of those questions, there is a good chance that you struggle with some kind of perfectionism. Also, as I said before, we struggle with the impact of perfectionism differently from each other. There are quite a few ways that perfectionism can impact us negatively and you know, there, it, it's, it's all on a spectrum. So there's all different ways and it can affect us all differently, but essentially perfectionism can eliminate your ability to celebrate your accomplishments. You just go to the next thing. Like you don't take time to celebrate because you're like, it wasn't even that great. Like, why would I even celebrate? Let's just go to get to the next thing. You um, create fictional problems out of fear, leading to procrastination and avoidance of the task. We overthink, excessively plan, and then end up in analysis paralysis. The time management struggles we already have are heightened by believing we need it to be perfect in every detail. We miss amazing opportunities by failing ahead of time, aka just not doing it, out of fear. Then, this can lead to reduced enjoyment and satisfaction in your work, avoiding new challenges, leading to increased anxiety and depression. I mean, why wouldn't it? You no longer enjoy or get satisfaction out of your work and you have just all of this pressure. That screams anxiety and depression for me. Perfectionism is self-harming and it can erode your self-esteem and lead to chronic burnout. Now, if you've listened to any of my podcasts or my course on burnout, you know that that can be dangerous. And you also may be asking, what is the difference, Carmen, between perfectionism and striving for excellence? I'm just striving for excellence. No, excellence is doing your best and knowing that it's your best and that it's good enough. Perfectionism stems from a fear of failure, and that's why and how they are different. Once the once the impacts of perfectionism start to really like affect your emotional and mental health, it can leave lasting damage to your self-concept. It impacts our personal, professional, and any other aspect of life, goals, all of the things, because you will continuously hold yourself back. That's how perfectionism can impact you. It can impact your entire life. Okay? All right, so 
And we talked about what perfectionism is and how it can impact us and hold us back in life. So now what do we do? Well, the good news is you're already doing the first step. You're becoming aware. We cannot improve in any part of life that we are not aware of. You can use the free follow along in the show notes to help you become more aware of it. Um, And once you become more aware of perfectionism, you can start to see how it shows up specifically for you. Do you have a really hard time getting started because you don't know where to start? You have too many ideas you can't choose? Or is it something else? What about while doing the project or task? Do you have the thought that you need to get it all done at once? Or what's the point? Or that you don't have the perfect plan so you can't start the thing? And or it takes a lot longer than usual, even for the adhd -er. Look for whether or not you spend a lot of time editing at the end, redoing parts of it because it's not quote-unquote perfect or right. Gaining awareness and recognizing how perfectionism shows up for you and how it holds you back, this is the first step. Identify those thoughts that make you feel pressure and that need for validation or people-pleasing. Recognize when you are procrastinating avoiding and beating yourself up after setting unrealistic expectations and or finding yourself in constant chronic burnout. I always recommend journaling or essentially brain dumping. And what I, it's not just like the typical journaling that you hear about. This is just kind of like stream of conscious writing and it's just writing out all of your thoughts on paper and this is because as ADHDers, we are visual people and keeping all those thoughts, to do's, emotions, appointments, etc. in your brain makes it hard to identify or even become aware of anything going on in your body or in your brain or anything. But when you see it in front of you, kind of like in black and white right there on paper, it's easier to pick out certain thoughts and become aware of them and recognizing what they are so you can start changing them. Another suggestion I have is doing this work with or alongside trauma-informed therapy. As a teacher, podcaster, and coach, I can only take you so far. So seeking help to work through this with a trauma-informed therapist would be the work for you if you feel like you need that type of support. Honestly, I know sometimes you guys roll your eyes when I say that, and I used to be very anti-therapy. Then... I started coping in ways that eventually forced me into therapy, actually forced me into the hospital. And, you know, anyways, I can say that with certainty that not only would I not be where I am today without therapy, I may not even be alive. For me, it helped that much. You do have to be patient. Finding someone who you like and and all that can take time. Don't be afraid to ask your therapist questions, though. It's like how you get to know them and how you get to know their style. And like with any tool, it has to be right for you to work. So it might not be therapy that doesn't work. You just might need to find a different therapist. So the next step in this process is accepting reality. Unfortunately, I know we hate reality. We would much rather just live in fantasy, but I promise you it doesn't work. I tried and failed. It doesn't work and then you come crashing down and it kind of hurts real bad because we are humans with ADHD. Our energy is going to ebb and flow. We also need to accept the reality that perfectionism is self-harming and it's not useful and that we are worthy no matter how much we do or do not get done in a day. Start by focusing on progress, getting a step done a day instead of the whole thing perfectly. Set realistic goals that give you time and space to enjoy your achievements. Develop the skill of prioritization and use it to your advantage by building what you need to do instead of getting lost in the mess. Use the time management tricks like I can do this for five or ten minutes or opposite of you can race the timer how much can i get done in this much amount of time 
utilize technology like ChatGPT and Goblin.Tools to help you break down that task or project into smaller steps, and then use them to help you with your organization, mind map, or however you like to view the steps to complete your task or project. Some of the other tips that I have may require more support, like a coach or therapist. That's why I touched on the topic of therapy. I invite you to develop some self-compassion. I know that sounds yucky and gross, but you need to have self-compassion so that you can challenge those negative thoughts and prove them wrong by reframing them. You need to start closing those what-if question loops that you are ruminating on. Seriously, answer them. What if they don't like it or you? Do you like you? Can you embrace that imperfection? Because the reality is, perfect doesn't exist. Mistakes in life are going to happen. So developing a growth mindset to view challenges as opportunities for growth instead of making them mean you're a failure is really going to help you in the long run. Build a support system of safe people. Join a community. Lean on your loved ones as long as they are safe to do so with. Set boundaries with others and internal boundaries as well. One of the best internal boundaries I made with myself that changed my life, it changed my life a ton. And this was, this is what it is. I will no longer speak to myself like I am trash. I will validate my emotions and be compassionate with myself. Now, did I first gag at that and, and, and whatever? I mean, yeah, but then I became the person who could believe it. And now, I mean, do I still mess up and catch myself calling me a moron? Yeah, but I recognize it. That's the difference now. And I acknowledge it as not true and unhelpful. It takes time and practice. So don't get too frustrated too fast. This can end up being self-concept deep work, which takes intentionality and time. It takes self-confidence and belief that your work is the best work. If this sounds intense, it should. It's not a little thing. It's going to take time. And I hope that you give yourself the time to do so because that really is an amazing gift. I really hope that you learn the steps to kind of beat perfectionism, which are gain awareness, acknowledgement, reframing, and using tools and supports to help you finally manage and even overcome perfectionism. Develop self-compassion and build supports in to set yourself up for success. As always, I love to hear your takeaways, what you found useful. Connect with me. That's all for this week. Stay authentic, my friend, and we will talk soon. Speaking of extra supports, I just wanted to tell you all that I've updated my Patreon page to include all of the resources that I've really ever made to be held in one place. Just head to my show notes. Um, the VIP members do get a little extra, um, but you can also purchase like my brand new Ultimate ADHD Journal and Planner, which I've been using for the past year that has worked. Um, nothing is priced over $10 and everything is at least 50 to 100 pages that you can download and print. You can get it to bind it and sent to you, or you can just read it off your screen and use notebook paper. So if you want or need any type of that kind of extra support, just head to my show notes and click the Patreon link to join. I hope to see you in there.